how winter unfolds in the next few days. Uh, <clears throat> but we here at our fourth Advent midweek divine service, uh, Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church of Wathena, Kansas, and we worship with uh, an adapted form of divine service setting five and Lutheran service book, uh, a uh, modified and abbreviated form. And we start with the singing of hymn number 357, verses 1 through 2, and we will sing verses 3 through 4 and 5 through 7 um, later in the service. So we'll be singing the same hymn all the way through. 357, verses 1 through 2. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all of our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. The Lord be with you.
Please be seated for the scripture reading. The scripture reading, which is the text for our sermon meditation this evening, is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, verses 13 through 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is, with whom he is pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue confessing our faith God gave us in baptism using the words of the Apostles' Creed on the inside back cover of your hymnals. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue singing the hymn, hymn 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We sing verses 3 through 4. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Luke 2, 13 and 14, again. You may remember Daniel from a few weeks ago, young Daniel. We saw him looking at the angel, and now we see him looking at a sea of flickering candles in a dark sanctuary as a chorus of voices sing, all is calm, all is bright. It's happened, hasn't it? It's happened here. Most every year it happens here. Well, after a few moments, it was calm, bright. All was calm, all was bright. Few nights offer us such a sense of peace and tranquility 
as the eve of Christmas that will be in a few days. Especially when the air is filled with the very soothing and almost haunting music of the hymn, Silent Night. There in the pew we wish that all knights might know this peace. Yet we are very aware that as soon as we walk outside the walls of God's house, that there is that exact same world that we walked in and away from momentarily that is on a daily basis completely unknown to any version of peace whatsoever. Yet each generation hopes that this year, this year almost finished, this year coming up very soon, this year in spite of all appearances and all indications, and there's plenty of them to the contrary, will be the year that is hoped for, long hoped for, for peace, and it'll finally happen. Everyone here remembers cataclysmic wars that engulf this world. Some of us still remember firsthand the bombs falling in Europe in World War II, and then later in Japan. That was more than 80 years ago. And then we remember Probably far more of us, we remember all of the war and strife and turmoil and bloodshed in East and Southeast Asia, and frozen hills, steaming jungles. Every generation in this country and any country has plenty of memories of warfare and strife. Well, we have memories of warfare and strife in our neighborhoods, don't we? Oh, maybe not right here, but it's there. It's there. Peace seems extremely difficult to define anymore for much less anybody. And so if we can't define it, boy, can we actually hope for it? But yet, here comes the Christmas story. Once again, on Christmas Eve, we have it from Luke chapter 2, as so many congregations have their children tell the story in recitation and in costume, it tells us of peace. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. A unique and a real lasting peace. That's the peace of the Christmas story. A peace that God announces not just with the chorus of a few weak and hesitant voices holding a candle on a Christmas Eve, but with a multitude of the heavenly host erupting in a thundering chorus of praise. Heaven explodes. It explodes here on earth in a real celebration each Christmas Eve, each Christmas Day. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom He is pleased, we see in verse 14. In the midst of this world that is so often marred by violence and hatred and hardship, here we have a veritable multitude of angelic messenger breaking into the night to announce 
a living, a real hope. Peace for those on whom God's favor rests. Everyone. What is this peace which the angels announce with such fanfare in a world still convulsed in war and bloodshed and violence? And how does such peace grant us hope when mankind still seems fret bent on self-destruction? And how does such a peace grant us hope when our own hearts feel unrest? Disquiet with unrelenting anxiety for all sorts of different reasons. All of the treaties and all of the efforts to stop the tumultuous turmoil on this planet will ultimately fail. Just like all those treaties that we wrote up with the American Indians. Yes, there will be a moment of tranquility. Some of those moments will last longer than others, and it will all them will be followed by yet another descent into more human sin and brokenness. And all of the counselors can bring words of comfort, but deep down, something will always be missing. The peace that the angels announced to the shepherds, first of all on that hillside, it's different. It's enduring. It's powerful. It doesn't depend on us humans. That's why it's different. That's why it's powerful. That's why it is enduring. It does not require our efforts. For at the very center of yours and my problem, we ourselves are at war with God. We rebel and we fight against His just and holy and loving will. So, if God doesn't create peace, well then, it's not going to get happen with mankind. We're doomed. We have no hope. But God does bring peace. He brings Himself. He brings His Son, Jesus Christ, to mankind. God comes into this world that we have made a peace-free zone. In our human flesh, to take our place. He came into this world to suffer for us in our place, for what we rightly deserve for our war on peace. Jesus. He came to die our death, to heal the broken relationship that we broke between God and us. That's the one problem that often gets, gets to be a stumbling point for us, though. It's that tiny baby, that tiny inoffensive baby. With that tiny baby saying peace on earth, it's easy to miss the significance of that proclamation of the angels. And that's why the angels amass in such grand regal formation with an overwhelming hymn of thundering praise straight out of heaven's glory. Christmas Eve marks ground zero for God's eternal peace plan. Christmas Eve is where hope is reborn. How did this happen? Jesus Christ, the baby of Bethlehem, peace itself in the flesh, made it happen. 
St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has declared you and me to be holy. Holy, who by faith are in Christ, clothed in Christ Jesus' righteousness. And then St. Paul, by the Holy Spirit's inspiration, goes on in verse 2 of Romans chapter 5 to say, Through Him, that is, Christ Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This peace of a restored relationship between God and us is the only real, true peace. It's a divine gift that leads directly to a new, brand new hope. And not just any old hope, but the hope of the glory of God, a hope that extends all the way to eternity. Now, many people who want peace in this world, and so many, many do all the time in every generation, many who want this peace do not understand where real peace comes from. Therefore, they despair when it fails to come. They think they will see it realized in the next political treaty, the next election, the next regime change, or the right conditions in their own personal lives. If everything works out right at the right time, ah, then I'll have peace. But St. Paul, by God the Holy Spirit's inspiration, said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, that the peace of God is ultimately beyond understanding. At least the purely human peace. It's a mystery of sorts, but not an unknowable mystery. For as Jesus said in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. True peace comes only from Jesus Christ. Not from governments. Not from other people. Not from drugs. Not from a sense of calm and tranquility, which is only temporary at best. It only comes from one person, Jesus Christ. Each Sunday divine service to which we gather, we are again led to that manger. Whether there is a representation of the manger sitting up here or not. We've led, we are led to the one who creates peace. We're led to the one who is peace in the flesh. Just like you and I are in the flesh. He's lasting peace. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the pastor declares to penitent sinners, And peace between God and mankind, real, true, lasting peace, is restored. Just from those words of God spoken by the pastor. Peace in the assurance of absolution, a declaration that we are again right with God. We are not God's enemy anymore. He said so. God did. We're reconciled to God by the atoning lifeblood of God's Son willingly and lovingly shed for us 
and into us from His cross upon Mount Calvary. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ. The pastor repeats again at the altar table of the sacrament. Peace in the life-giving presence of the Christ. A broken a body broken at death in our behalf. Blood shed in payment for our sins. Eaten. Internalized. Christ with us. Christ in us. Emmanuel. Peace again. Restored. Assured. It was a great contrast that first Christmas Eve night. Who would expect a multitude of angels to announce peace to a bunch of humble shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night? Yet, when that multitude of God's messengers emerges from heaven's glory into the darkness of that night, we pay notice. They, didn't, they don't speak often, but when they do, we listen carefully, very carefully, because they speak God's recreated hope of His certain loving reconciliation with mankind by the blood of His Son that makes everything right between God and you and me and all mankind by God's loving declaration of His pure and perfect peace that He has declared into you and to me by His Word. Peace has come to in Jesus Christ and Him crucified in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand for prayers of the church. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, may your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death in the midst of both good and evil things, that your own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all of those we name in heart and in mind, and all of those who are in need of body, soul, and spirit, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. 
Lord, in your mercy, lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offerings to the Lord. Please stand as you are able for prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make, let the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the closing verses of the hymn for this evening. Hymn 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 through 7. 5 through 7.
Okay, well, good to see you all here. Um, it, we'll see if uh, what's predicted actually happens. We hope not, or hope it's greatly diminished from what's predicted. And, uh, but we'll wait and see what God gives us. But uh, in any case, uh, Lord willing, we'll see you all here Saturday evening, which is, uh, as this calendar year falls, is Christmas Eve. And hope to see you then next morning at the usual time, 1015, the Christmas Day service. Um, anything, any late breaking announcements? Yes. You might announce no Sunday school the, on Christmas. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no Sunday school on Christmas morning, Christmas Day morning. Yes. Oh, and uh, five dollars for uh, poinsettia plants that are up there. If you want to sponsor, adopt, buy one, uh, they're there, and they're still nuts and candy available if you're looking for any last-minute gifts or if you just have a, a hunger to satisfy. Okay, thank you. God bless. Mm -hmm.